tense is comprised of two distinct facets, time reference and aspect. Time reference indicates when the context takes place relative to now, and aspect indicates when the verb takes place relative to the context. In our corresponding part 1 video, we explained what we mean by context and we covered the implications of time reference in its three options, past, present, and future. In this part 2 video, we'll explore aspect. Let's consider context to be a frame through which we view a given period of time. Verbs can occur within that time frame, outside that time frame, or partially in and partially out. These details are expressed through aspect. English has two marked aspects, perfect and continuous or progressive. The perfect aspect communicates that the verb begins before the context. The continuous aspect communicates that the verb lasts at least through the span of the context. Since these criteria are not mutually exclusive, it's possible for a verb to be both perfect and continuous. But a verb that exists wholly within the context is called simple and is neither perfect nor continuous. Let's consider an example as we explore these further. Suppose that Patricia throws a party, and the whole party is our context. At some point, everyone plays a game together. Since play both starts and finishes within the time frame, this should be a simple tense. Guests are also listening to background music throughout the party. Since listen lasts until the party ends, that verb is considered unfinished within the context, and so it is a continuous tense. The same would be true of any verb that repeats the whole time, like snacking on hors d'oeuvres. A verb doesn't have to be constant to be continuous. The guests also get to enjoy a fresh pie that Patricia has baked. Since the bake action occurs before the context, it's expressed as a perfect tense. Now, you may be wondering, if bake happens outside the context, then why mention it here? Well, regardless of when the action takes place, the verb is still relevant to our context somehow. Perfect verbs may extend into the context, or they may have a lingering effect in the context. In this instance, we see the result of Patricia's verb. While the bake action takes place before the context, during the party there is a hot homemade pie ready for everyone. And perhaps the kitchen is a little messy during the party in the aftermath of Patricia's baking. Alright, so far, our context has been the party as a whole, but what if we narrowed or broadened our focus? If we zoom out to consider the entire day, then both bake and listen become simple tenses, since they now occur wholly within our new time frame. On the other hand, if we zoom in to just a few minutes in the middle of the party for whatever reason, play might be a continuous tense, or even a perfect tense, depending on its start time or duration relative to our new context. This illustration represents how subjective tense can be. It depends on what the speaker focuses on. The actual verbs in our example never change, but the aspect we use to express those verbs can change when the context does. Now, everything that we've covered about simple, perfect, and continuous tenses in the context of Patricia's party is consistent whether we're discussing the party ahead of time, sharing details while it's happening, or recounting the events later. In other words, these verbs can all be past, present, or future and that wouldn't affect their aspects. Alright, so a verb can have a past, present, or future time reference, it can have the perfect aspect or not, and it can have the continuous aspect or not. When we combine time reference with one both or neither aspect, we get our standard English tenses, from future simple to past perfect to present perfect continuous. In fact, there are 12 tense possibilities here. There are also some non-standard tenses, such as future in the past or past habits, and these can get a little trickier since English doesn't have a marked aspect for habituals, for instance, but instead has a different way to express when such verbs take place. We're not covering those in this video, but just know that there are more options than the 12 standard tenses. There are more details to explore about the perfect aspect and about the continuous aspect so you can check out other videos from Insights to English to learn more. Even each tense combination has its own nuance, so they are typically presented one at a time. 
but it helps to observe the big picture as well, in order to identify what similar tenses have in common, and understand how to switch from one tense to another simply by altering your perspective. In summary, aspect is the timing and duration of a verb relative to the context. The two marked aspects are perfect and continuous. We can include one, both, or neither aspect with one of the three time references to form the standard English tenses.